Permafrost, it's called a ticket and time bulb because once it starts thawing, it's pretty much impossible to stop. Permafrost, it's a ground which is frozen for more than two years. In the summer, you can take a stick and you poke it to the ground and then maybe in a meter, a meter and a half, you will hit something solid that didn't thaw for many, many tens of thousands of years. That's permafrost. We are now about like 40,000 years in the past at this point. The permafrost which we care about is usually located in the top 40 meters. These top layers of permafrost store more organic carbon than all above ground vegetation of the planet. There's almost twice as much carbon stored in permafrost as there is in the entire Earth's atmosphere. And that's more than twice as much as there is in all of the trees combined across the planet. Where the climate is warm and where the trees grow very big, the only way to sequester lots of carbon there is in the form of stems of trees. But if you go to the Arctic, the situation is vice versa. The way to mitigate carbon in the northern environment is to develop soils. Your trees are small, thin, sparse, but the soils in the Arctic are cold. And if you have vegetation which is developing deep root system, they will build up a huge storage of carbon. When that plant matter dies, instead of rotting down quickly because it's so cold, it kind of just builds up and you get these really deep, rich soils in the Arctic that you can see are full of this just kind of partly decomposed plant matter. All that carbon that at the moment is locked away in those soils is vulnerable to release into the atmosphere. And if just 10% is released, then we're looking at something like a 75 parts per million increase in the concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere. That is a really significant change. When I was a kid, temperature of permafrost used to be minus 6, and now it's minus 3 and even warmer. As soon as temperature of permafrost reaches zero, it starts thawing. If it thaws, microbes will awaken and start converting this organic matter into greenhouse gases. What happens in the Arctic unfortunately does not stay in the Arctic. If and when that carbon is released into the atmosphere, then of course the consequence of that is that we accelerate climate change, so we increase warming. More warming means of course more warming in the Arctic, and that means more thawing of the permafrost and more release of carbon into the atmosphere. And so we enter this sort of vicious cycle. If we do nothing, Degradation of permafrost will not be gradual, it will be abrupt thaw, and this will lead to the collapse of the global climate. Grasslands can help. Poison Park. The idea was developed by my father, Sergei Zimov, back in the 1980s. It was even long before people were talking about the climate change. It was the idea of restoring the ecosystems in the Arctic the way it used to be. High productive grazing ecosystem. Back in the Pleistocene period, we had millions of animals in the Arctic, and it was lots of forage for animals, it was herbs, it was grasses, it was nice pastures. And now the ecosystems in the Arctic look totally different. This is typical forest, and it's most typical landscape in our territory. There is nothing to eat for herbivores. With the Placing Park, we want to take ecosystems to their original state, to restore the whole functionality of the ecosystems. We are increasing the number of animals and let them convert the landscape to the ecosystem which they need. Herbivores must prepare pasture for his children. How increase volume of pasture? You must kill trees. It's his genetic hobby kill enough trees and your children will found enough grass. More grasses, more food, more animals, more animals, more excrement, better soil, grasses grow faster. Grasslands are faster at locking carbon into the soil than some other types of vegetation. Um, it's also got a different albedo, so that means that grassland ecosystem can reflect more radiation rather than absorbing that as heat. During the winter, when animals trample down the snow, they actually thinen their layer of snow, making it dense, 
and this allow much deeper freezing during winter. So animals just looking for snow, actually making permafrost much colder and keeping this huge carbon reserve, which is now under our feet, intact. If we want to protect the Arctic, if we want to protect the permafrost, then we have to cut global emissions. Every action that we do take does have an impact. Every tonne of carbon that we prevent from being emitted into the atmosphere, every fraction of a degree that we slow down climate change does have an impact on all of our lives and on the future that is accessible to us. The project of Poison Park, unfortunately, will not stop climate change entirely. But if we we'll make the high productive grazing ecosystem within, let's say, half of the Russian Arctic. We can mitigate billions of tons of carbon. And that's comparable with all Paris Agreement efforts. I think the biggest objection which we have is that it's too hard of a task, that it's too complicated what we want to do, and we are very short in time. But you know, you can never solve a problem unless you're trying to solve it. Yes, creating ecosystems in the entire Arctic, it's a very ambitious task. But if you don't set ambitious tasks, you get nothing. Overall, I see that what we are doing is changing the landscape. And I know that it's not just a crazy idea that it works. The long-term goal is to create a ecosystem which will have more wild animals than there is present on the planet right now and have this ecosystem help us mitigate climate change in the future.